Let me trade you. Are we live? It's work. Yep. Good to go. Hello from the Mansfield Blockhouse and Log Cabin again here at South Park in Mansfield uh, for another segment of Willard Rev War. Uh, right now we're going to be doing a little bit of military drilling and musket demonstrations. Uh, I'm using Baron von Steuben's drill book from the revolution. Baron von Steuben came to North America uh, to help the patriots at Valley Forge is when he first came. And we still use a lot of the drills that he taught them back in the winter at Valley Forge uh, with some modifications for modern modern weaponry. But these are the commands that uh, we learn uh, at school that I teach my students. And these are the ones that I'm going to be teaching them right now. So let's uh, go on up and meet some of the troops. And I'm going to teach them some of our some of the commands. All right. Uh, when we are standing at attention, uh, your feet should be, your heels should be together. Um, and you make kind of a V. I always tell students, make a V for Von Camp or Von Steuben. <laughs> Um, you're going to uh, put your musket down at your right toe, uh, your right little toe, uh, and that's your attention. Your hand is down, and simple, uh, simple enough. Uh, but we need to be able to get the musket up off the ground in order to do anything, if we're going to march or drill or anything. So the next step is uh, to put it at, at your shoulder, and the command is shoulder fire lock. You're going to toss it up in the air on one, and on two, you bring it over, and on three, you bring your arm down. Kind of go through that once or twice on your own. You're, when you bring it around, you're going to make sure that the trigger guard is to your arm stick. Okay? So bring it back down and around, and we'll do that command. Shoulder, fire lock. One, two, three. Yeah, we look like we're in training. That's good. <laughs> Um, and the opposite command is ground fire lock, and it's done in uh, in two counts. On one, and then on two, you kind of let it slide to the bottom there, down. So let's do that again. Shoulder fire lock. One, two, and three. Uh, if you're going to turn to uh, have the a right face, the command is to the right face. All you're going to do, I'll turn this way to help. Uh, you're just going to turn your right on your right heel over and then bring your left foot around. It's modified a little bit for us, but it works. To do a left face, it'll be just on the opposite to the left face. One, two. To the about face, you're going to step back with your right foot. You're going to spin to the right and bring that left foot back up to make that nice V. To the about face, one, two, three. And you'll want to turn to the right when you do that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I've seen the commands where they say to the about right face, which helps everybody know exactly yeah. which direction you're going. All right. Now, if we are going to uh, try and load our muskets on command, the what is it? The first command is to that you need to know is to poise fire lock. So you're going to grab it about right in here, pull it around right in front of you. And from what I understand, is you leave it uh, the trigger going to your left, and or sorry that hammer to your left, the trigger to your right. Yeah, you're opposite from me. <laughs> um, and go ahead and shoulder fire lock. When you, uh, if you want to do present arms, it's almost the same as poise fire lock. Just one extra step to it. You do the one and two. But on three, flip the other way from you and step back on your right foot. And 
that's present arms. So shoulder fire lock. Do a nice present arms, just because we can. Present arms. One, two, three. Okay, so let's try and go through the, uh, the firing process. The first uh, step is to poise fire lock. You're going to um, half cock fire lock. You're going to pull it back one click only because you don't want it going off. Um, then handle cartridge. You're going to reach in and grab the cartridge. You're going to rip it with your teeth. Good job, gentlemen. And I can see that all of you uh, passed your medical exam. You have your your teeth, uh, your front teeth, because, of course, we don't want you if you don't have your teeth to rip it open. Um, the next step is to prime. You're going to put a little bit down in the pan. We'll close the pan, then. Shut pan. I think it's this is what he has with his command. All right, then. Um, handle cartridge, and I think you just drop your musket down. You're going to dump the powder in, the ball in, and the paper. Of course, they don't have a musket ball in there today. This is just powder rounds. The next command, draw rammer. The next command is to ram down cartridge. The next command is to return rammer. And we could put you back into poise fire lock or shoulder fire lock. We can go to poise though. Poise. Yeah. I'm going to step up here, social distance from behind them. Yeah, since I have a fake musket. Uh, the next command is uh, to take aim. And you're actually going to. Uh, you're actually going to step back on your right foot, and you're going to uh, get ready. Uh, and take aim away from the street. Yeah. Okay. And, and fire. As soon as that happens, you're going to bring it back down in front of you, and the process uh, continues. Now, um, the difference between, I think Larry had mentioned in his video that the British never took aim right. uh, because they felt that it was unethical. But the Americans, we, we tended to take aim. So let's try that firing again, should we? We have more rounds. Okay. So. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go to poise fire lock position. Half cock fire lock. Handle cartridge. Prime. Handle cartridge or charge with cartridge. Ram down cartridge. Draw rammer. Then ram down cartridge. Um, some of the things that uh, that 
So I, I didn't activate uh, Task Fire Locks. That was the other part that I missed in that process. That's a good good thing to know, isn't it? Otherwise, we go off half-cocked and we don't accomplish anything. So I'm glad that the soldiers knew what they were doing. I paid for my commission. <laughs> um, what else? What else would you like to share here? Some of you that have done some of this before. <laughs> With military drilling, uh, the drilling was usually done in the winter. And they would prepare for battles in the spring, summer, and fall. That uh, it was a time to heal and train in the winter. So, well, it's getting spring. It still feels a little chilly here, but uh, it's getting spring. This uh, this is, is kind of the end of their training time. Uh, this is when soldiers would be going out to battle. Anything else that you'd like to share? Um, maybe one one thing that would be interesting. Notice how we have a new gentleman joining us. And uh, if we look at how he's dressed, he's dressed a little bit differently than the rest of us. Um, Lance, would you mind just sharing a little bit about why you're dressed in a different manner than than the rest of us? Sure, sure. So we, we all portray different personas or different types of people that lived in the 18th century. I portray someone that lived on the Western Virginia frontier, which would have been on the border of what's now West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, that area. And in the uh, 1770s revolutionary war time, that would have been the frontier and, and people would have, uh, you know, dressed a little different. I, I, did, I did watch some of the earlier things uh, that were taken from here, talking about the size of the logs in the blockhouse. That area at that time, they called it the big shade. The trees were so big and so large that people said you couldn't even see the sky. So the people there tended to, uh, you know, dress a little differently. They, they worked a little bit uh, more in the brush, in thickets, and all that sort of thing. So you can see I have buckskin leggings on. That would have been in the spring, summer to protect, protect the legs. Um, hunting frock, which you know, the person I portray actually was in the French and Indian and in the Revolutionary War. George Washington actually wanted this to be uh, what they wore in the French and Indian War because they were cheap and kind of did the job. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, a portrayal of how that person would have dressed, still still with the waistcoat on, uh, the, the, the shirt and that sort of thing. Some may have just worn, as uh, Liam here has, just a work shirt uh, over it. Um, some of the research I've done, the, the person that I portray was David Morgan, and there's a firsthand account of him, of, of a girl that was at Prickett's Fort, which was there, and she says one of her fondest memories of the Morgans was remembering them with their long shirts, buckskin leggings, and long rifle in hand. So we have a firsthand account of that and kind of how they, they may have may have dressed. So, well, Thank you for sharing that. Uh, we will be back in about 12 minutes uh, back in the cabin. We have a couple of people joining us to teach us how to make a compass and a sextant in order to do some navigation. Excellent. Cool. 